Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to do a uh, how-to video. I'm going to show you how to build a big ball shock from uh, scratch. If you buy this kind of shocks, usually they come unassembled. And I'm going to show you how to assemble one. What happened is, I wanted to make uh, the video for you about this uh, sand blocker for the shocks. I took one of the shock out and I wasn't happy about how I felt about it. It was seems to be of need of maintenance so I said why not let's uh, video how to build it back for you so let's get to it if you want to replace one of your uh, shock parts or if you buy it uh, unassembled you need to know how to assemble it back so uh, first of all let's talk a bit about the parts of the shock you have your spring the oil tube your pistol it goes up and down very important to be completely straight if this thing bent you need to replace it you have here some rubber bands to prevent the oil from leaking outside the seal of it this is just a dust guard and you have the bottom part of the pistol this will connect to your car and the cap and the membrane this part goes inside the cap gives you the room for the oil when the pistol goes up and down more space for it to expand to so the build we will start in the upper part take the cap put the membrane inside gentle this is how it's supposed to look inside now you took the oil tube and you take one rubber band to the inside all the way and this plastic part some shocks may be built a bit different they all come with a guide on how to build it and if not usually your car as a guide on how to build the shock after we put a one rubber band plastic part and another rubber band this is the room where the pistol goes through and the oil will stay inside so by now uh, this part comes unassembled but I didn't want to take it apart because uh, I might damage it so uh, it's very simple you have a plastic part and this nut right here goes on it just put it on it, very simple. So we take the pistol, we run it inside like this. Make sure the rubber band stays inside. Now this cap will prevent the rubber bands from going outside. It's okay if you do it only by hand, don't need to be too tight. Now you can see shock pistol inside. Now we can take the shock. I will do the spring, the last part after I put the oil. These two parts go here for the spring. This is just a dust guard, it's very nice, if you have it, not all the shocks comes with it. This will go at the end. I will put it only after we put the oil inside and I will explain in a second. Okay. A bit about uh, shock oil, there is many kinds of uh, shock oil thickness out there. Um, you decide which one is good for you, depends on your driving style and uh, especially on your driving uh, terrain. If you have terrain more smooth you can use a uh, thicker oil so the shock observer will be more stiff and you have a more smooth ride. If you usually drive in more rocky terrain and you want the shock to behave very fast and be more springy to absorb use less thickness of oil. So I'm gonna take the one in the middle because I drive in many terrains 
especially in uh, bashing terrain, jumping and stuff. So I'm going to use the middle one. First of all, fill it up. Fill it about halfway. Just a second. That's about halfway. Not sure if you can see. It's about halfway. The thing is, I don't fill it all the way up. When you fill it up with oil, air bubbles will go inside, and the air bubble is bad for the shock because they will make like a foam inside after. So, if you can see, air bubbles inside going out. When it be completely full, you will see it better. After you fill it half halfway, just leave it in the side, standing up of course. I'm gonna find something to put it on, like this. And just give it like 15 minutes to all the air bubbles to go inside. Then we're gonna fill it all the way back. So I see you guys in 15 minutes. Okay guys, 15 minutes have passed. For you it was less than a second. I found my uh, 3D printed uh, screwdriver rack to be perfect to hold the shock observer. Now I'm gonna fill it all the way up. That's it. When you fill with oil, don't fill it too much. You need to have room for the membrane here. As you can see, it has a curve inside, which is just about perfect. When all the air bubble will go out, it will be perfect to the side. So now I'm going to leave it 15 more mi minutes for all the air to come out. See you guys in a sec. Okay guys, time to finish the shock. Meanwhile, I had time to work on my other shock. Again, I took it apart and I felt it wasn't very good. And after I took all the parts out, I saw that the ribbon here is ripped. Luckily, I had spare. So this is part of the stuff you need to check when you take a shock apart, that all the parts are okay. So now for the last part, take the cap, close it, and not all the way, just this way. And now you need to adjust the center part of the shock. So for me, I like the full length of the shock, only just a bit after it so I will just squeeze it just about here and now close it all the way you can use hold this part and give it just ah, you don't need to be too tight that's it to do the job just fine after you close it you can bring back the spring Hold this with your hands. You can do it by hand. It'll be just fine. You can give it an extra spin. Hold this not too tight. Don't hurt. That's it. Pistol. And the shock is ready. As you can see. Very nice. Move. This is how a shock should, should be. In time, you will have the feeling to see which shock behaves okay, which one is uh, over spring for you or over dumped. If you want to be just a bit more springy, you can shorten it up. As you can see it's a bit faster now. Very nice. So I'm gonna 
next to the second one it's exactly the same okay that's it guys the shock is ready you saw how to build it from scratch so now we know how to replace any of the part and the uh, oil of course if you want to do a different setup uh, hope this helps you feel free to subscribe and i see you guys next time yeah.